and welcome to episode number four of Will It Paper, my favorite and only series on this channel. For this episode, we have to thank my lovely father. My parents have this amazing pond in the backyard. This pond, like most ponds, grow algae and it's like these long algae, like these thready algae. I don't know what to call them. Let's just, you will see. And he asked me the question. He said, Lisa, will these algae paper? This is exactly how it went. This is, this is accurate. Will it paper? So me, of course, answered, there's only one way to find out. So he gave me a bucket of algae and I brought it home to try and see if we can make paper out of algae. So that is what you will see me wheel it paper today. Uh, I also have to give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, but more on that later. For now, let's get into it. Ooh. Okay, so these are the algae I was talking about. They're a little slimy and they stick together a lot. You can kind of see that they are almost hairy fibers, and those are the reason I think this might work as paper, because I'm hoping that the fibers will be able to shape into a sheet. The first step is of course to try to blend these down to a pulp. I don't know how easy this is going to be, or if they are going to tangle around the blades of the blender and ruin it, so at first I'm starting with only a small amount of algae and a large amount of water, just to be safe. I put the water and algae mixture into my blender and blend until I think it's enough. Let's see what the result is. When I put my hand in, I basically only feel liquid. I hardly feel anything that could be a pulp. And it is at this moment that I start to worry a little bit and to question how possible this will actually be. But let's strain it and see if we are left with anything pulp-like. When pouring the mixture into the strainer, I notice that it's straining extremely slowly. Normally when straining paper pulp, this step does not take that long. But now it's taking forever. I notice the liquid is very much sticking to the mesh instead of falling through. This honestly should have been a bigger indicator of what was about to happen, but I did not realize this in the moment. The more it strained, the more I was getting the consistency of pulp, and I was regaining some confidence in the paperableness of the algae. It wasn't much more than a small handful, but I stored the pulp into a small container while I went to blend the rest of the algae. The blending went very smoothly and my worry for my blender was very unnecessary. But the straining took absolutely forever. I sped it up here a lot for you so you can kind of see how it went. In the end I'm left with a few small handfuls of a pulp-like situation, but the pulp feels noticeably a lot smoother than paper pulp. It is also sticking a lot to my hands, so make sure to rinse it off in the strained water that I'm going to keep to use later, because I'm feeling like a lot of the fibers are left in the liquid. Now we can go ahead and try to shape some paper. First, I am adding the strained liquid to a larger container. Then, topping this off with more water until it's enough to work with. I add a nice handful of the pulp to the water and make sure to blend well. For this, I'm going to be using this dual mold and decal because these could be a really cute size for cards or something. I dip in the mold and decal and scoop up as much pulp as I can. Then let it strain out while tilting it around. The straining, again, takes a very long time, but this is partly because of the small molds. 
When most of the water has been strained out, I lift up the frame and take away some of the pulp that was left in the middle, so there's a clear separation. At this point, it looks good and promising. I then flip it onto a cotton sheet and press it in. I squeeze out as much water as I can with a sponge. Now the moment of truth. I lift up the mold and it doesn't come off at all. It's supposed to transfer to the cloth, but it just doesn't. Plan B, I flip it over, put a sheet on top, press that in and try to peel it off like this. Sometimes it comes off better this way, but not in this case though. Absolutely nothing. This is the moment I realized I need to change my tactic. While trying to put the pulp back in the container, I realized how bad the issue was. The pulp was in no way coming off of the mesh. I had to scrub to get it off. Which was telling me that there was practically no way it would just transfer to the cloth. At this point, I came up with something we could try. It's an unconventional plan, but I was thinking what if we blow dry the paper when it's still on the mesh? <laughs> like, it might work. What is their expectation with this method? That it will still be stuck on the mesh, but then dry? And it will take a long time. We gotta try. We gotta at least have like half a sheet of paper. At least. <laughs> but like it, it's it's like smash a lot. I say we try. So once again, I scoop with my mold and decal to create some sheets. Wait the ridiculous amount of time for the water to strain out, and then lift off the mold. I decide to press out the water before blow drying, because I feel like it would otherwise take way too long to dry that way. So I flip it over on a cloth and use my sponge to squeeze out the water. I flip it over to then carefully peel out the cloth that way as to not damage the pulp. It worked for the most part. I then get out my hairdryer and dry the pulp for a solid 20 to 30 minutes. Far from ideal, but I got it dry. Then once it's dry, I try to peel it off. It is barely coming off and definitely not in one piece. I was really trying, but it kept breaking off and it was really hard to even get a start because it was just embedded into the mesh, not on top like normal. I only managed to get off little flicks. I guess you can call it paper. I had one more plan, which was to make the thickest sheet of paper I could manage, so that maybe a part of it would stay on top of the mesh, making it possibly easier to get off, and then to just let it air dry. So I add all the pulp into the container, mix it up, dip in the mold and deco, let it strain, lift up the frame, and then press out the excess liquid. I set that mold aside and decide to make another mold as well, so I would have more chances. It's at this point I realize that maybe the pressing out the excess water is a part of the issue. Maybe I am pressing it into the mesh too much. So I put the pole back into the container and remake it without the last step of squeezing out the water. I also end up remaking the first smaller mold without pressing those in as well. I then set them aside and let them dry. And I think this is now the perfect moment to talk to you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for all different types of creatives to learn from thousands of classes on topics like crafting, illustration, photography, and a bunch more. I'm actually following this class on using plants at home to uplift your spirit and space by Christopher Griffin. I love plants and I'm now finally learning how to make them work in my space. 
there's classes for everyone whether you're a beginner or a master and the nice thing is is that there's no ads you can generally just focus on learning when it's convenient for you which is for me with a constantly changing schedule super convenient if you're also interested in learning cool new creative things on skillshare they now have this great offer where the first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial on skillshare now let's get on with the video so here they are dry it took a solid two days to dry them fully but here they are i don't have a lot of hope at this point they don't seem very thick and don't seem to be laying on top of the mold either the big one seems to be the thinnest of the two so let's start with that i can get a little start but not much further than that it seems to be embedded into the mesh once again let's try one more time with the smaller sheets I managed to get quite a solid start, but I feel like I need some help to get it off in one piece. So I use this thin sheet of strong plastic and carefully slide it underneath, and to my surprise it actually seems to work. Not all the sides are coming off as easily, but it seems to be staying in one piece. I take my time to make sure I don't rip it, and then it actually comes off. And it looks like a piece of paper. Let's take off the second piece the same way. I cannot believe it, we have managed to actually get two pieces of algae paper. Can you believe it? I barely can. Let's hurry up and test it. You can see that the paper is actually quite thick and it's not as brittle as it seems. It's actually quite flexible. The side that was on top has quite some lumps and bumps, but the side that was on the mesh is pretty smooth. The first test is a folding test. Does it fold without breaking? And yes, it does. Impressive. Now, how is writing on it? I'm going to write on the smoother side, and I recognize it's a dark paper, so black ink won't show up, but I don't have that many materials, so we'll see how far we get. Like always, let's start with a ballpoint pen. I can barely see it when writing, and I wish you guys could feel it, but it doesn't go down smoothly. And I'm scared that the pen will rip through the page with every letter I write. Now let's try a fountain pen. This is actually not that bad. It hardly bleeds, shows up pretty well, but I'm again worried about the page ripping. It's hard to describe, but it feels very brittle. Now let's put down some pencils to see how well the eraser works. The pencil shows up a little bit because of the reflectiveness of the lead. And with the eraser, it actually doesn't do too bad. It doesn't erase properly, but it also doesn't take away any fibers like it would with other recycled paper. Now, I don't have a white pen, but I do have this white Posca marker. It definitely shows up, but it doesn't go down super smoothly either. I also have this lighter colored brush pen that actually goes down pretty well, but doesn't show up a lot. And lastly, I'm trying some white acrylic paint. Normally on recycled paper, acrylic paint works pretty well, and this actually goes down pretty smoothly, and shows up well. And when you flip the page over, nothing has leaked through or anything, but you do see that where the acrylic paint is, the paper has become very weak. Now, I want to do one more thing. I am ripping this page in half on the fold, which goes so easily that I think the fold would probably not have held up a long time. I want to paint the whole page, so that maybe it could become a base for a cute card or something. but the paper really doesn't like it. It acts a little like printer paper would if you paint it with watercolors on it, if that means anything to you. But honestly, I did not expect we would even get this far, so I am not complaining. And there you go. Um, I am not entirely sure how to conclude this video. What do you think? On the Willet paper scale, how much does these algae score? If you know what I did wrong, where it went wrong, what I could do differently to maybe make this work better, 
please let me know. I am also here to learn. If you want to see more of me, you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Navamartisa on both. And if you want to see more of me on here, don't forget to subscribe to be notified for every new upload. And if you're interested, don't forget to check out Skillshare in the description down below. For now, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye! Welcome to episode... What episode are we on? Let me find it. Um, everything's going wrong. What were we looking up? I remember. I think. Yes. Number three. Yes, we're at number four. I was correct. What type of algae are these? I should prepare before doing this intro. I don't know what to call these algae in English. I will look it up again, once again. I got this. I will prepare better. <laughs>